Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Disco Elysium. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today, as uh, I did not find the pile of rags that we're looking for, but we're going to talk to Evracht. I'm not really sure where the pile of rags is. It is not there, but I did find something else, and we're going to go into that. These shoes come in three different sizes. I don't know what these shoes are, but our conceptualization is high, and that's what that check was. Now, I found this. I mean, we've found that before, but uh, there's a new dialogue line over here. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The nature of the plinth reads... The name? The name on the plinth reads Krasmazov. Why does this tenant have a bust of Krasmazov in their bedroom? I'm gonna ask. And Kim says, the white star. The photos on the walls, I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. He looks around before mumbling to himself. How fitting. Yeah, I was sort of right uh, about that. I don't know why we didn't get that line before. I know for a fact we interacted with it. Uh, or maybe I don't know for a fact. I don't know anything. But look at this. Was this here before? Was it locked? Maybe it was locked. What do we have over here? A book called 16 Days in Coldest April. I... It's an interact book. The cover features a now... Uh, sorry, a row of concrete buildings with a monochrome rainbow in the sky. It tells rather... Which is just... That's not monochrome. What the heck? <laughs> this is three colors. Um, it, it tells a rather excruciating story about two lovers during an ethnic unrest in Yugograd. The book has been fil filed under psychological realism. In your hands, you hold 16 Days of Coldest April by Yekartina Dal. The cover image shows a row of concrete apartments above which spans a black and white rainbow. Oh, there we go. So that, that's, that makes more sense, I suppose. Maybe the green was just... Yeah. Uh, indeed, the book is unusually heavy in your hands, as though the cover were lined with lead. They would do that in Grad, says our Inland Empire. I would imagine that it is filled with things, but I guess we'll find out. How long is this book, anyway? You flip through the book. The page... The page... Is that G normal? Yes. Yes, it is. It looks to my... Uh, my eyes are going a uh, shot. I'm... I can't see for crap. Anyway, the page... Just... That's what threw me off. The pages are thinner than you realized, and the... Type, quite small and tightly set. It's nearly 600 pages long. Maybe that's why it's heavy? I, I don't know. Do thinner pages... Are thinner pages heavier? I suppose maybe that's the case. Let's look at the back of the co or back cover. The back cover is dominated by a black and white photograph of the author. What does she look like? She can't be much older than her mid-30s in this photograph, and yet from his, this cover, the eyes of a sad old woman stare back at you. I can start reading. Let's put the book away for now and not read right this moment because uh, we have a book and also we have this. What is this? The sea below looks cold and winter gray. Someone has torn the wall down. Okay, that's this doesn't go much, very far. An old grocery, gross, grocery list on the table and checks. What happened here? Asks our logic. You can't foreclose on an apartment with a hole in the wall. I say, and our logic says, it will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Well, except for the stuff in the fridge. Indeed, says our logic. And it has Nosafed and a little bit of money. Hmm. Not that we need those, but uh, such is life. Let's go upstairs. Is this the fastest way upstairs? I'm not actually sure. I'm very confused about the, the layout of the of the of this particular area because there's a bunch of doors connecting to a bunch of things. Uh, so this is the painter. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? She was very quiet for a moment there. Um, yeah, the two dudes by the car send their best. I don't believe it. 
That's a terrible impression of her voice. I don't believe it. I've never known those boys to have manners. The bemusement in her voice doesn't fully mask genuine tenderness. Well, maybe it's just skull solidarity. They'll never be skulls. But, but their hearts are in the right place. Um, skulls are cool. Can I be a skull? Fat chance. But you can still do your part to revitalize the neighborhood. Okay, how's, how's that? She throws you a conspiratorial glance and then presses her finger to her lips and squints up at the sky as though straining to hear something in the distance. Let me check. Did I actually gain experience? I did not. It was just a, an empathy check over there. She says, have you noticed the quiet? Every so often you might hear a gunshot pierce the air somewhere in Jamrock, but in Martinez, no gunshots, no sirens. The people are languishing in boredom and complacency. The place is a, is a sepulcher. We'll paint it red. We bring the raucous. You bring the sirens. Is raucous? I thought raucous was an adjective rather than a name. But, yep. Yeah. I didn't figure that I could talk to her about the two folk, the two people in the uh, next to the car. But I forgot that she was part of the skulls. Or at least as far as we knew, of course. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting... That's a pro that's probably a hidden speech there because you need to you need to most likely have talked to her before talking to them and finding out about her being a skull is actually not as straightforward as it might seem because it's, it's a couple of checks I don't remember what checks it was and then you need to go talk to the folks at the the car and then come back over here hmm so that takes us downstairs she doesn't say anything uh, I say downstairs. To the place we want to go, actually. Uh, but upstairs, the balcony. That's where I think maybe the... Uh, oh, I wanted to save. I didn't save. Um, that's where I wanted to go. To, well, well, the where the pile of rags might be. Although, we don't know. That's locked. Can we actually do anything about the lockedness? I'm going to say we can't. Well, we have a bunch of tools for this. We have this amazing one. But really, this is the one that I figured... Yeah. That I figured would be useful. And it isn't. It, it, I mean, it's normal that it isn't. It doesn't doesn't have a, a chain or anything. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. No one answers. Let's go. There's nothing to do here for us anymore. Yeah, I think that pile of rags might be behind there. Either that or I just... I, I really have no idea. Anyway, we're going to a route, and I'll see you there. Actually, since we're coming through here, I might as well go into free tame, see if there's anything... Well, sell my... My tire, tear, whatever. Looking for something, or and uh, and see if I can talk to the girl and uh, be like, "Oi, I met somebody. I mean, I didn't meet anybody, but I've heard of somebody that's just like you." Hi. Um, is this about the questions again? No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Let's sell things. I think this is just for drugs. Tear machine. Wait. I have the tear bag, but no tear. What do you mean I have the tear bag, but no tear? I definitely have tear. Let's ask. Excuse me. I have the tear bag, but no tear. Can I still use the tear machine? No. She doesn't even bother looking up from her magazine. You need tear to use the tear machine. Huh? For some reason, I thought. Oh, I've been missing. Mm. I need to go walk around with the, with a tear bag. I don't remember where I stopped using it. I don't. I usually use it and the flashlight because it seems to be the the best way of doing things. But uh, is this how we get up there? I believe so. This area has got such an oppressive soundtrack. Yeah, it's through here. Right, right, right. Because the other way, it's now blocked because of the 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 door being closed. 
Ooh. A giant aspirant on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrests. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. Hmm. I don't know why that's still there. Let's go upstairs. The radio definitely makes a noise. You could hear it on the right side. For some reason, it's on the right side. I, I, it, it, it throws me for a loop a little bit. So. Evacht. Oh, it's going to be a journey, isn't it? Sure, it isn't. We can do something about this, though. This 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 thing. I needed to persuade uh, probably Kim. Let's get our rhetoric pants on. So our rhetoric, we don't have rhetoric, at least not at the moment. Let's uh, see what I can do. Got some drama. We got some logic. Shivers, drama, drama. A lot of drama pants. Oh, rhetoric. It's a minus. Doesn't matter because it at least at least will t tell me if I have uh, anything. There it is. If I have anything worth using or uh, downgrading my rhetoric is what I mean. Not worth using. Of course I have something worth using. We don't have rhetoric glasses? Hmm. Okay. So this is the white polo. What's polo anyway? That's why we get rhetoric. Persuade the door to open, not persuade Kim. I... I'm very sorry, but um, let's do it, please. Ah, oh, come on, come on. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because getting physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? The lieutenant looks startled. Uh, using my body over my wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. Uh, can I, actually? I wonder if I can. Uh, erratic yet thorough. Been in the world for two days. Been in this world for many days. Precarious world. An ecosahedral dice set. Sirens. Oh, no, we definitely... This is like a secret thing. We're definitely safe scumming this one. Uh, because this is like... This is secret. And uh, I don't know when the game ends. Uh, and uh, I don't know anything. So for your sake and my sake as well, I want to open this and I will. Despite the dirt that surrounds and trails you, a beacon of light emerges from deep within you. Hello? Is anybody in there? The door stands silent. Satisfied, detective? A wry smile ac crosses the lieutenant's face. Try again, says our rhetoric. If there's someone in there, I'm gonna say, I'd like to talk to you. Just like that, you hear a click, and then a rattle. Some mechanism unlocks itself inside the door. And I, there's a mega rich light bending guy from deep within the, uh, the container, a voice. Ahoy, come on in. The smile disappears. You can't be serious, says Kim. Oh, I am serious. I, oh, what in the world? Ooh. Ah, what? Oh, oh no! Where's my money? Oh! <laughs> what in the? F <laughs> He's mega rich, all right. That isn't even. Oh, it just gets keeps getting higher. Oh, the, he's in there. The closer I get to him, the richer I am. Can I go back there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh... It's how close I am to him that changes my money. What? The man stands at the far end of the shipping container. It's hard to say anything about uh, more about him. You cannot make out any of his details, but you do feel the overwhelming presence of capital. 
the feeling causes all the hairs on your body to stand at attention like soldiers preparing for review. Oh no, I've been feeling that of uh, since we started here. That I'm gonna squint. Something's amiss. The light beams bend around his face and scatter in a thousand directions. It seems the laws of physics don't apply here. They're suspended, distorted. An echo. Trying to visualize the physics at play is liable to give you an, an aneurysm. Don't think about it too hard, says our visual calculus. On a failure. Impossible check as well. In the general stillness, only your tongue moves, flickering as you utter... What's going on in here? Welcome, welcome! Not too much, actually, just pleasantly surprised to have company today! You can't hear him, exactly, yet you're able to understand every word he says. It is very strange, an overwhelming hum covers everything. A voice doesn't escape from him. Now, he claps his hands together, what can I do for you, gentlemen? What can you see of his, what you can see of his body appears composed in a sharp summer suit and yacht shoes. Who are you? Who am I? Oh, I haven't been asked that question for such a long time. Oh, the subtext in this line right here. There's genuine sur Oh, there's uh, the narrator says there's genuine surprise in his voice. I don't meet a lot of people outside my circle these these days. Anyhow, my name is Rostam Diodor. Interestingly close to uh Dolores Day. It's kind of maybe Diodor could I don't know if that is Italian for um, the pain of God, because Dio and Dore is, Dore is pain, Dio is God. Maybe, potentially, I don't know. Rustam, I don't know, but anyway. Investor, license holder, and extremely high net worth individual. And you are? Mr. Diodor, says Kim, I am Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi of the RCM, and this is my partner. Harrier Dubois, I complete. Pleasure to meet you, Harry Dubois. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. You're all numbers in my... Anyway, he's not saying that. Uh, he says warmly, actually. He, call... he says my name warmly. I must admit the name suits you very well. How did you become so rich? Oh, Lord, not this again, says Kim. Kim, what do you mean, not this again? What is that? Why did you say that? Did I... Seriously, though, I, I, did I say anything for him to do that? What's the matter, Kim? Oh, nothing. It's just that we've got this murder to... <laughs> oh, that's what he means, not this again. <laughs> we got this murder to solve, and yet you go around asking everyone about money. And every time I ask, are you sure this is related to the case, you say, sure, Kim. I think it is. And yet, it never seems to get us any closer to solving the case. The man chuckles. It's quite all right. I'm used to the question by now. To be blunt, I inherited my fortune from my grandmother, who herself was an extremely high net worth individual back in Grad. All I did was take her fortune and invest it prudently. Believe it or not, it takes more than a bit of skill not to blow a vast fortune on sailboat, uh, on sailing boats. Bad choices and unsupervised state policy. The, I, mm -hmm. Our rhetoric does a challenging check there. Actually, at level thi uh, this guy is, it takes several generations to do that, but all right. It takes... What exactly takes... To do what? The super unsupervised state policy? Because I think that's what it means. Our rhetoric here is pointing out that the system that this guy lives in is th is going to take several generations to ch of change to create state policy that makes sure that he loses his money. Unless, of course, people just eat him, which they could, they could do as well. Um, can I eat him? What is it like being an extremely high net individual, and high net worth individual? 
I ask, and the man exhales with a whistle. I gotta tell you, at first, being rich is a lot of work. Uh, you've got to work hard, because everything's so darn expensive. You know, prices increase exponentially at this income level. But then... You, that sounds like bullshit, honestly. But then, once you have reached my position, it's nearly impossible for me not to make money. My assets are so diversified that I'm bound to come out ahead no matter what. Indeed. Uh, like, for example, the banks responsible for the 2008 crisis in the United States, financial crisis, crash, really, uh, were punished by... What was the... I don't, I don't remember what they... I mean... Nobody was arrested in the United States, uh, because of course not. It's the whole generations thing that this is talking about, although this is probably on a global level, because it is also on a global level. But for example, in the United States specifically, uh, the, the banks were forced to in, you know, like invest in, I believe it's um, low rent, uh, like, I'm not sure if it's low rent housing or uh, like uh, development and stuff like that. And the banks figured out a way to actually make money with that punishment. So, yeah, you actually have to try, and even if you try not to to lose money, you can, you still end up can still end up uh, in very high places indeed, as we know uh, uh, very well, well, considering what what is going on in the world. Um, I read that. Some of my lower net worth friends say to me, "But doesn't that take all the fun out of it?" And I tell them, "Not really." Yeah, I think that that. Oh, we got a bunch of options, and I don't have any interesting replies. <laughs> is the last one? The last one is the most interesting, usually, because the because it's always the joke, right? Um, at the game's expense, whereas these ones is the joke at the philosophies behind whatever thing like expense that we're doing. So we got all the four philosophies. Let's see. You're right. Capital accumulation is its own reward. Um, that's that's uh, what would that be actually in the context in the t context of this game? I'm not actually sure what this is like. This is, this is it, it. Is it a shallow? Is it? It could be a shallow uh, attitude towards why the super rich want to be super rich. And I say shallow because it sort of like it. It's it's li it's like on the face of it shallow. Like it's is its own reward. It's just sort of not looking very deep. Necessarily, no. It's not that it me that that it's uh, that it's wrong. I think it's wrong because capital, uh, in this case, you know, monetary capital, um, it, it, it's all about power, really. And so it, the the reward of capital accumulation is power. Um, but, but that's that's my take on it, which is a little bit deeper than that. But it doesn't mean that I'm correct. I think I'm correct. But anyway, don't you think that what you should the second option here, that what you should uh, that you should use your great wealth for the glory of your fatherland? Uh, that's probably the the fascist one. Do they call it fascist in this game? I think maybe. You're uh, interesting as well, fatherland. I think we've come across this. I and I rambled a bit about it. I don't know. If there's what what the meaning is for that, not motherland, fatherland. I think the Germans. Is it fatherland in German, and motherland in Russian, and that's where English sort of takes more the motherland uh, than the fatherland. English says motherland a little bit more uh, than fatherland, but it's still in my head it's associated with Russian, I'm just sort of like the the Russians in, in Command and Conquer just being like, oh, for the motherland, and stuff like that. That's that's where it, it, the, the images that it evoke, that it evokes for me. Uh, you're a thief. Ah, that's probably the one I'm going to go with. People out there are working their asses off while you chill in here. It's also a shallow interpretation um, because you're a thief, but you don't actually explain why. Uh, the reason why is because the money that he has is made out of, out of work that of, of the people that he employs. Uh, so basically, he's uh, he's uh, using its profit. It's called profit. I'm sorry, profit. It's just this is should be profit in big capital letters, which is stands for the same. It's great that you have done so well for yourself, but don't you think you owe some of that wealth to the rest of society? This is probably the moralist one. That sounds um, liberty, not libertarian, liberal, which uh, I believe it is the moralist sort of. Uh, uh, what's, the, what's the word that I'm looking for? Sort of, you know placeholder, not placeholder, but the counterpart for in this game's world. Let's go with this one, even though it is a little bit on the shallow side as well. He says, and that's what? Unjust? I think it's perfectly just. His tone is ever so slightly less agreeable than before. Uh, 
you're using your m money as its own justification. Let's go. Let's see where this game goes with this. I'm not really sure what that means here. And he says, listen, Mr. Dubois, I used to be an idealist just like you. I love... This does happen, by the way. It's very, it's very easy to tell... Well, it's not very easy to tell. It's not very easy to tell, but... It, 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 like, you can tell about somebody's I, uh, I, it's, mm, ideals. To use the word ideals here is going to make, make it a little bit more complicated, but you can tell a lot about somebody's philosophy by certain things that they say that might be just tangentially related to their philosophy, and you can assume, and if you assume and sort of push some buttons here and there, uh, which he has definitely done, by the way, because... Uh, because there's basically this is uh this is him pushing the buttons and I I confirmed it over here so he's there's room for his character to assume my ideals but that doesn't mean I'm an idealist um certainly like oh actually this idealist is um there's a very like there's a pervasive I'm not really sure where it came from I probably should look into that because it's an interesting uh interesting thing uh there's a pervasive idea in some people not many not all people then I don't believe in all countries or anything but that people that are more um left leaning uh have utopic ideals and if I say it like this I'm sure some of you, if not all of you, will know what I'm talking about here. Um, and it's just because, you know, it's a difficult thing to achieve something like, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know, a, a society without money and without wealth, uh, inequality and uh, without hate and all that sort of stuff. That's definitely utopic. Um, but the, 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 the notion that it is utopic uh, is used, and certainly was more, more when I was a kid. I remember that being here in Portugal anyway, so it, it, it's, it, it, my experience is worth what it's worth in the context of the, wor the whole world. But here in Portugal, I remember learning about utopia specifically in... Uh, utopia, I mean the word utopia and what it means, specifically in that context of, of sort of a world that you wish could be, but can't. Which, which is not what utopia means, by the way. A utopia definitely does not mean that it cannot exist. It just means that it's the perfect world. Uh, like the dystopia doesn't mean that it cannot it cannot exist. It's just the worst world. Uh, that's what it means. Or I say worst, but just bad or good. That's yeah. But anyway, it is used. Uh, that word specifically is used as a sort of a political weapon against people who want things to get better. Uh, it's just that's what it's used for. It's just nah, you're just a utopia, uh, utopian, or you're just an idealist, which is just it's it's such a. Like the, 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 it's 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 very it's a very liberal um, thing to do. Honestly, it's sort of like oh no, we must work sustainably and progress must be sustainable and incremental, so that you know just all that all that nonsense. Uh, but uh, yeah, so, so maybe that is what he's referring to here. Even though because the word idealist it doesn't doesn't apply. Uh, like somebody just because you have an idea or an I you have ideals. Specifically, just because you have ideals, which you probably do, unless, I mean, everybody's got ideals, right? Uh, unless you're just really mush. But even mush has ideals. Just they're they might be very buried, and you might not think about them. But you have ideals. But that doesn't mean you're an idealist. Do you know what I mean? It's like having it's basically the same thing as principles. It doesn't mean you're a principled person. You might have principles, but but you can still comp if you compromise them, then you're not a principled person. It then it. Sure, that's that's what it is. It's it, I I don't even think that that's necessarily a uh, a good or a bad thing being principled or not being principled. It's just how it is. But here it's definitely used as a weapon. Anyway, he used to be an idealist just like you. But the truth is, ah, the truth that we have no objective system by which to measure someone's value other than the market. We should just embrace that rather than resist it. Yeah, that's that's uh, it's more libertarian than liberal, but still, I bet I'm right. I bet I'm right when I'm sa when I said that Dolores Day was the invisible hand of the market. It was a bit of a stretch, but I think I was right. 
Anyway, we're going to find that out in the uh, following episodes. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Disco Elysium. I really hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.